بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ الذي لا يبلغ مدحته القائلون ولا يحصي نعماءه العادون ولا يؤدي حقه المجتهدون والحمد لله الذي من علينا بمحمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وبآله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم ومبغضيهم وغاصبي حقوقهم من ليلنا هذا إلى يوم الدين ما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه تبارك وتعالى في الكتاب المجيد والفرقان الحميد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم افمن يهدي الى الحق احق ان يتبع او من لا يهدي الا ان يهدى ما لكم كيف تحكمون صلوات we are tonight here to remember a personality in the Ahlul Bayt which is matchless and has no parallel. One, because we are talking about a lady and there isn't any other lady who is Masuma except Fatima Zahra Salaam Allah Alaihi When in Islam and before Islam, there were certain tribes who buried their daughters alive. And there were certain families who inherited their stepmothers as part of the estate of the father. When women were not even considered to be belonging to human species, not only in Arabia, but history tells us that this was prevailing even in these parts of the world. At that time, Fatima Zahra became a symbol of <laughs> honor for the women. How? When our Prophet started propagating and when people saw that Islam was spreading very fast, faster than they had anticipated, the only solace they drew was that Muhammad has no male descendant. He had Tahir, Tahir died. He had Qasim, Qasim died. He had Ibrahim, Ibrahim died. Three sons died. And because he was bereft of all the male children, therefore they thought there will be no progeny. So they started talking among themselves, saying, let us wait till Muhammad dies. Iza mata Muhammadun mata dinu. When Muhammad will die, naturally the deen and the religion that he is preaching will also die, for there is no one to inherit. Well, that is their way of thinking. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave one daughter, according to authentic history that we have, she was the only daughter. There were other daughters in the household of the Prophet, but they were not born of the Prophet. They were daughters of 
Khadija bin Tukhwaylid's sister, brought up by the Prophet in his household. But from the Prophet and Janabi Khadija, then there was only one daughter, and her name is Fatima Zahra Salamullah Aliha. Now, in the days when the descent was not counted from the girl's side, it was considered from the boy's side. And when people were actually hiding, if they had girl born at home, Quran says they used to hide from each other. If anybody asked what happened, what delivery has occurred, they would not reveal that a girl is born. You see, they are either ashamed or they were resentful. But here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in answer to those who said, that Muhammad has no progeny, Allah says, tell them, Inna a'atayna kal kawthar. We have granted you good, plentiful. Fasalli li rabbika one har, and in response to what we have blessed you with, pray unto him and give a sacrifice. Inna shani akahu al abtar. Your enemy will have no prejudice. But the world will see in each and every corner, there is Fatima Zahra's son. If it is a Sayyid, a Sayyid who is either Fatimi or Alawi or Hassani or Husseini, Naqawi or Radawi or Kazmi or Musawi or Jafari, every one of that is a child of Fatima Zahra. And every girl, every daughter born in a Sayyid family, the whole world is full of, and not only full of, the descent of Fatima Zahra. But whoever is a Sayyid is proud of being a Sayyid. While those who come from Muawiyah and others, they hide. They would not tell you that they come from those shameful figures of the history. So, Honor to women folk came from Quran direct. <laughs> that the abundance and plentiful of God represented in the figure of a girl, a daughter. That is one. And the Prophet, whenever she came, when she was young, she used to, he used to stand up from his place and seat and give that seat to his daughter. <laughs> 